How's it going everyone, Vertic Designs here and for today's video I want to show you all an epic technique which will give you a 4K Ultra HD results when using the Generative Fill in Photoshop 2024. Now this trick will also help you to fix those horrible blurry edges or results when using the Generative Fill to expand a background in Photoshop. I'll also be showing you all how to use Photoshop's actions to automate this whole process so once you've got it set up all you need to do is simply press play and it will automatically expand your photo with the highest quality results. With that being said, let's jump straight in. Now you're probably wondering why exactly is this even a problem and why is it happening? Well, it's really simple. Adobe Firefly is currently limited to 1024 pixels times 1024 pixels. So for example, if you had a 4K image and you wanted to expand that image, it will generate that block in its true quality and then it will stretch it out in order to fill in that missing gap. This is when the blurriness comes because once it's stretched, you lose the true quality of the variation. Now this problem will be fixed. Adobe has mentioned that they do want to upgrade their Firefly to be able to do up to 4K and above. So for now, this is the best way to get the best results. Now, in order to automate this whole process from start to finish, we have to record every single action that we do inside of Photoshop. We can do this by going to Window, going down to Actions, and in here you want to get yourself four action folders. Starting off with Block Down, Block Left, Block Up, and then Expand Photo. Press OK, and you want to get yourself a new action and just call this one Expand. Once you're ready, press Record, and now this will record every single step that you do inside of Photoshop. So the first step is always recommended to unlock your layer so you can actually edit it. And as you can see, it has recorded the first step as set background, which means unlock the layer. Now the next step from here is to expand this canvas by going to image, go down to canvas size. And in here, we're going to specifically target the left side by left clicking on the right arrow and this will only focus on the left side of the canvas. Now, the great thing about this is that we can also type in plus 1024. And what this will do is it will expand this canvas exactly 1024 pixels over to the left side. You can even go a step further and type in at times two or three, and this will give us an additional two more columns over to the left side as well. From here, we can press OK. And as you can see, we now have a perfectly even area that we can work with. And then from here, we can also go to view, go down to guides and get yourself a new guide layout. What we're going to do in here is we're going to paste in the width to 1024. You want to get yourself the rows and paste it into the height as well. Now, sometimes you will get an error message, which will say that you cannot fit eight columns onto your canvas. So this is very specific to your photo. And what you need to do is you need to experiment and see exactly how many you can fit onto your canvas. Now for me, I know that I can fit seven and I also know that I can fit five rows without having the error message. Now, since we don't really need the gutter, which is the gap in between, we can also set this one to zero and then set the second one to zero as well. We can then press okay. And now we have the grid onto the photo as well. From here, we also want to crop this down and make sure that we only have whole blocks within the canvas. The reason for this is because if you have half blocks or these ones, the action will just simply stop and you will have to correct this error. So for us to save some time and not have this problem, we're going to crop it down and make sure we only have these blocks within the canvas. And as you can see so far, we have unlocked the layer, expand the canvas, add the grid, and then crop. From here, the next step is to go to selection tool. We're just going to switch it to the fixed size and you want to set this one to 1024 times 1024. Now, what this will do is it will give us the ability to left click and create ourselves a perfectly even cube or box. From here, we can go to Generative Fill and then click on Generate. Now that you've got yourself the very first block, what we're going to do is we're going to press Stop on the main action. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to scroll up and focus on the block down sub action. We're going to create a sub action which will tell this block to move down and then generate the next block. So basically what we want to do is we want to move similar to a printer where we're going to go down, 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 left, up, 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 left, down, 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 and then down again. So we can save some time by recording it into these sub actions for the block down, block left, up, and then left again. Starting off with the block down, we're going to get ourselves a new action and call this one D1. You want to press record. And what we're going to do is we're going to press Control Alt and T, which will activate the repeat step. From here, we can drag this down. You want to make sure it is within this box and then click on done. You then want to click on generate and this will then record the step and generate the next block. Once you've got yourself the next block, we can now press stop and we have the sub action for the block to go down. We also need the sub action to go left and up. So we're just going to go into the block left, get ourselves a new action and just call this one L1. We're going to once again, press Control, Alt and T. You want to move this block over to the left side, press done and then click on generate. You then want to press stop and then once again, go to block up, get yourself a new action. And we're just going to call this one like one up. And then once again, repeat the steps. Move this one up, click on done and then click on generate. Once it's generated, you can press stop. And now we have all of these sub actions that we need in order to continue with the main action. What we want to do now is we want to delete these cubes or blocks it's generated. You want to go back onto your main one, go all the way to the bottom and press record. Go to D1 and just press play. And this will automatically move the block down and create the next block. We want to do the same as last time, scroll up, play the D1 action and do this all the way to the bottom. And then once again, one more time. And then once you get to the bottom, you want to play the L1. We then want to play one up and do it for the other three blocks as well. You just want to repeat the same steps until you get to the very last one. And then one more time. You then want to play L1. And then we're back to D1. You want to do that three more times. Once it's finished, you can press stop and yours should look something like this. You should have the first one, which is D1 four times, which is D1s, move left and then up four times, left one and then four back down. Press control or command and H. And as you can see, this is now perfectly copied this side or generated this side which looks very similar to the original. You can also see that we don't have any blurriness whatsoever. Everything is nice and sharp and high quality. You can even see the rocks are very close to each other. Sometimes you may get a few imperfections like here. You can see the blur a little bit, but you can always fix this with some sharpness and you can also apply some grain in order to match this with the original. So it's completely up to you if you want to sharpen it up or add in some grain, you can easily do that. 
But once you've got this and you've got the action created, if you wanted to use it for any other photo, all you need to do now is simply close this down. You would then press no, reopen the same image, and you would turn this canvas into a template. So let's say for example, we wanted to use another image, drag and drop this onto a new canvas, unlock this layer, and then we're going to drag this one onto the main image. We're just going to scale this up and then unlock this layer, holding control, left click on here, and then press control or command and J to crop this down. You can then delete the other two and you want to right click on here and flatten this image down. You need to make sure that your image is a background and it's the same size. Once you're ready to expand this, all you need to do now is go to actions, go all the way to the top to expand, and then just simply press play. And now this will automatically generate the missing area and expand this image with an additional three more columns. And the great thing about this is that you can relax, sit back and just let this automatically generate the side. And there we go. We can now press control or command and H. And as you can see, this has now perfectly expanded this photo with the exact same quality as the original. You can barely tell the difference between and you have this really nice quality. Now, sometimes you do have a few imperfections like these little lines, but you can easily fix that just by using the remove tool and then putting all of these into a small object. And that's pretty much it. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think of this video. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. We are so close to 100K right now. It would be amazing to hit that goal. And as always, I will see you all in that next video. Bye.